All right, first and foremost, I want to welcome Seth to Cruise Control. He's been in a few of our reviews, but it's time that you guys actually get to meet him. Why don't you go ahead and say hi, Seth. Hi, <laughs> I'm Seth. I drive an 08 Civic Si uh, with K24 Frankenstein motor. But today I get to drive a Supra, and I would say I'm, I'm pretty super excited. Are you super excited? I think I'm super excited. Are we both? Let's do this. Supra excited? Welcome to Cruise Control. Alright, welcome to Cruise Control. My name's Eric and today we have a beautiful 2021 Toyota Supra. Let me talk a little bit about styling, then we're going to get into the driving characteristics and things that I like and that I dislike. Number one, let's take a look at this wheel right here. As you can see, this red brake caliper says Toyota Supra on there. That is a nice big red brake caliper. I really like the two-tone design. The black on chrome really sets this wheel off apart. I really like that a lot. We're going to come across to the front here. These headlights, it's got triple beam headlights. If you can kind of see those triple beams that are in there, I think that's a really cool design. This front end splitter is really good looking. This one's wrapped in a beautiful red. Underneath, it's a dark gray color. As you can tell, we have the Toyota Supra nose that's up here. It's gonna look very similar to the one back in the Mark IV Supra. What do you guys think of the styling? When this first came out, I was not a big fan of this front end, to be honest with you. But you know what, seeing it in person, it really has grown on me. All right, so these are fake vents right here. Not a big fan of the fake vents. I think Toyota should have done something about this. They say you can remove them and put stuff inside here to make them functional. If you come over here, the owner of this vehicle actually did replace these vents right here on the top. And then the owner also did some nice carbon fiber trim pieces that go across the, uh, the door panel. I like that a lot. The, the side skirts look really minimalistic, but it does really set off the, the vehicle. My favorite design element is probably gonna be going towards the back. This three quarter panel right through here, I really like this big fender well. Just gives it a really distinguished look. Big fan of that. As we make our way to the back, you can tell you see this really huge carbon fiber wing that the owner put on here. I think this looks amazing. What do you guys think of the Toyota Supra? Which generation is your favorite? Mark IV always has a big following, but you know what? The Mark V is growing on me. Hear that engine one more time. The seats themselves, as you can see here, they're kind of a flat piece. They don't really hug you in that well for such a sporty vehicle. I was actually expecting bigger bolsters. Now, as you can tell, the bolsters on the sides to be able to hold you in, these are great. So I definitely like how supportive they are. They're heated, so they can keep you nice and warm. There's some carbon fiber trim that you'll start to see up here. And this is gonna be a design element that at least breaks up just the all black. We have some uh, shiny black plastic that's here. Not a big fan, this gets a lot of fingerprints that are on there. Easy controls that are all through here. Appreciate the knobs that are on here. Not like, they're not capacitive, touch sensitive. Nice big screen that's gonna be up here, not out of your way. The dash is a little bit high for my taste. I'm not a big fan of the dash. All right, so now we're gonna cover the driving position. I have about two inches of headroom that's here. Um, I'm pretty comfortable as far as my, uh, my shoulders concerned. Again, this part doesn't really hug my legs in. I wish these bolter, bolsters were bigger. There's a lot of manual adjustments that are down through here that you can see. There's um, two different settings that you can do for your individual drivers. So presets one and two, and then of course you can change everything else as well. As you can tell down here by my feet, there are only two pedals down here. This is not a three pedal car, so there's gonna be no manual transmission that's going to be my biggest complaint unfortunately and then we're going to go into the steering wheel steering wheel is a pretty simplistic design not a big fan of this plastic piece that's right here i think it would be a, a nicer design element if maybe that said supra if you're going to have a plastic piece on here or just remove that altogether because this is prettier and if that was the whole color that was right here this is just a cheap piece of plastic that i'm not a fan of the steering wheel though is a nice nice firm 
uh, grips. I really like the, the 10 and 2 position. All the buttons are very easily uh, marked so you can get it. The paddle shifters are in a good space. I wish these paddle shifters were metal instead of a cheaper plastic, but they work well. It shifts pretty good. And then we're going to make our way to the gauge cluster. This gauge cluster up here is an all digital design. I'm going to put it into sport so you guys can see how that changes as well. You can tell that it glows just a little bit different and then the engine is just a little bit louder. But I really like this gauge cluster design. It's very easy to read and very simple. So as far as the, uh, the driving position is concerned, I can drive in this in comfort mode. It's incredibly comfortable actually. You can drive this for maybe a four, six hour uh, road trip. You won't be sore at all. Just put the heated seats on. If it's warm outside, put the AC on and you can go for a nice little drive. And then when you get to that favorite mountain road, you're gonna be able to uh, put it into sport mode. It firms everything up and then it's just a really fun car to drive. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna test the zero to 60 time. I have launch control activated. We have an app downloaded on our phone. We're gonna see what we're gonna get. We do know that zero to 60 at sea level should be around 3.8, maybe 3.9 seconds. We're at 5,000 feet elevation in Loveland, Colorado. So we're gonna see what this does at almost a mile above sea level. All right, let's get to it. We got a 4.3. That is going to be our best of the day so far. We may try this again later, but right now 4.3 at 5,000 feet elevation. Yeah, that's properly quick. drive the uh, Supra. I'm going to tell you guys my driving impressions, what I like about it, what I dislike about it. First and foremost, we're going to be in the comfort mode, and that's probably my favorite mode for just doing your typical day-to-day -day driving. If you want to be able to go to the grocery store, go to work, you want to be comfortable, this is the setting that you wanted it. Now, when you hit your favorite corner, it firms up, the auto response gets on it, and you can go have your fun. So I like this for the dual personality. That's a lot of fun. Plus, it can also be just your general cruiser. Now, the owner, they actually got uh, an average of 25 miles per gallon, which is really good for something that has, honestly, about 400 horsepower. Toyota and, and uh, BMW, they claim that it's less, but I care far less. Let's get the elephant out of the room. People are like, oh, it's not a real Supra because it was built by BMW. No, 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 no. Be grateful that this exists at all. So I'm happy. I don't care if Toyota made it or if BMW made it. It's just the fact that the Super is back. Awesome. What I don't like is it doesn't have a manual transmission. That's the biggest flaw. If you guys have the window buffeting issue, I'm going to show you guys this really cool carbon fiber piece that you put on the outside and it gets rid of the window buffeting. So problem solved there. So thank you for making those and this owner put that on there. So that made the drive so much better. The last thing about it that I didn't like is the fact of the fake vents. I drove the Type R, and if you guys want to check out the Type R video, it's going to be in the link above. But the Type R had fake vents as well. It got a little bit more forgiveness. I still don't like the fake vents on the Type R, but it got a little bit more forgiveness because it was built on a cheap Civics chassis. Uh, normal Civics, 20 grand. The Type R is around 37,000. This starts off at over 40 grand, and this particular model is closer to 60 grand. It's not okay to have fake vents on a $60,000 pure sports car. Pretty much it's never okay to have fake vents, but especially not in something like this. Oh, hi. Hey. Got any gray poupon? No. no? That's a bummer. I'm out of here. <laughs> about as much fun as I've had behind the wheel of anything. I don't know how you don't floor it everywhere though. Tricky, tricky things. I even like the steering wheel, like the way it feels. Paddles are nice, everything. 
everything about this is pretty incredible. This much power for for fifty five thousand. It's uh, it's a good value. I really feel like you can go on a long drive in this car and be comfortable. pleasure cruise. I think this is a good car for that too. You can kind of just drive it nice and easy or it can be an absolute monster. I love it. Maybe I'll have to buy one. It seems to automatically shift into automatic and as soon as you click a paddle it's like you got it which is uh, very nice so it is immediate response steering brakes and transmission ridiculous amounts of power uh, I know it's quoted uh, as having 382 horsepower and 368 foot-pounds of torque, um, but it must have the best drivetrain in the world because it seems to add power. The thing actually is like 388 wheel horsepower and 421 foot-pounds of torque. So that's a pretty good amount of power for a 3,400 pound rear wheel drive car and just the handle is just really good. All right, so we've both driven the Supra and I'm sure we have our own opinions before we get to the opinions. Seth, you were with me when we drove the uh, Type R and you had said that was the best front wheel drive car you'd ever driven. Yep, it so, still is. So now comes the time, it's difficult. If your money was on the line, my money was on the line, we're gonna do three, two, one, and then we're gonna say, which one we'd rather buy with our own money, the Supra or the Type R? Three, right. two, one, Supra. No. <laughs> All right, Seth, give me your top three things that you love about the Toyota Supra. Uh, this Toyota Supra. This Toyota Supra. Specific. Uh, the power. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. The rear wheel drive. And then a uh, toss up between the carbon fiber parts and the blood red metallic wrap. Yeah, I really like that color actually. The wrap is really good. My, my top three is how it looks, how it drives, and how it sounds. <laughs> What's your least three things you don't like? Uh, I, I feel like the suspension could actually be just a little bit tighter for track purposes, Okay, but as a daily driver, right. it is fantastic as is. Gotcha. It's two so more. quiet inside. Yeah. Uh, two more negatives? Yep. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can come up with... Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, no six-speed manual. Um, I'll probably move that to the number one spot. About some and vents. then fake vents? Yeah. Fake vents are... Why? Why? <laughs> So, you guys have heard my, my, my negatives, right? He just covered them. The fake vents, the lack of a manual, and the, the window buffeting, but this was easily solved with that little carbon fiber piece that we showed you earlier. But the fact that there is no manual is the, is the main reason why I wouldn't spend $55,000 on a car like this. I want a manual transmission. Toyota and BMW, you know that you can put this in here. Make it happen so you can make us happy. My name's Eric, this is Cruise Control. My name's Seth, this is Cruise Control. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. Have a good one.